All right. We are we're temporarily back. Another edition of After the Whistle. I don't know. When was the last time we did an episode? March what? What? I couldn't even hear you. When, when was the last time we did an episode? March what? Like I couldn't even tell you. Like the last day, last week I was in school. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we we're gonna put one out for you people. For all you folks out there that's missed us. I don't know when after this when we'll do another one, but you know, we'll try to do as much as possible. And we got a lot to talk about. First, the NFL draft last night. Well, no surprise, Joe Burrow went number one. Uh, that that was as shocking to anybody. Not everybody. Not at all. Yeah, I don't know. They were making all these comparisons, saying some other quarterbacks are going to be the number one, but it was like, no, it's Joe Burrow. Like, like what are we doing here? Yeah, man, that's the that's the guy top of the mountain. Heisman winner. National championship winner. How you gonna put somebody in front of him when he has all the tools to be a franchise quarterback? And he broke all the records. So yeah, and he, only thing he has is small hands. He's not a small guy. Yeah, so the, the Bengals had to. The Bengals had to do it. I mean, if they wanted to go with Tua, they could have, but they probably would have had to sit him for a year. So Burrow was the sure thing since he's not injury prone like Tua. And the Bengals, they. I mean, <laughs> they needed a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, man, the redheaded stepchild, bro. You might have to put him as backup or release him just because he hasn't done anything in what over ten years. Uh, how long have you been in doing? Yeah, that sounds about right. I think he came in like twenty eleven or something. I think I kind of guess, but he's been there long enough. Feel like yeah. at least ten. Yeah, it does. He's been there forever, so it's it's a good change for them, which was no surprise, but. If we keep going down this list, the first couple picks were not a surprise. I mean, we all knew Chase Young, if he wasn't going to go first, he wasn't going to go second. And he went to – he's going back home, which is pretty cool that you're going to go back home to the to your hometown team. Where did he get drafted to? I didn't even see the whole list. Oh, uh, Washington, Washington. Chase okay, Young, okay. he got drafted to Washington. So, he went to that I'm, high school, DeMatha. Yeah, I'll be honest. It's cool getting drafted to your hometown, but it depends what franchise it is, man. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, it's easy for us to say that because we're from New England. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> yeah, especially a franchise I, I ain't won a playoff game in like. They can't win like, playoff games. Like, they don't even get a dress as their, their logo. You know what I mean? You call them team from Washington. Like, that's just not even a, that's not just, it's not a good formula of successful football. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just not. Luckily for them, they got some excitement because they got him and then they got Dwayne Haskins, which Ron Rivera, they got a new head coach. So a whole lot of new things for them, but they still got the owner. (laughs) And for some reason, like, as much as the owners don't really, like, play, they don't really affect the outcome of the game, they affect a lot that is put out there as the product. Yeah. Sometimes the owner's got to look at the marriage and say, I suck, man, and just hand the rings down to somebody else. But I, talk, I was talking to my pops about that. It's hard to step down from being an owner. All that mm-hmm. power, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, even, it's not even that they need to step down. It's just they need to step back. Just uh, stay, so, stay in the shadows. You know, like Kraft. Bob Kraft, he stays in the shadows besides that one. <laughs> I'm going to stop bringing that up, but... Honestly, though, the only reason why Bob Craig gets so much publicity is because we win so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were losers. We were, He wouldn't – honestly, when we, were, when we were losers, I had no clue who the owner was back then. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Because he just does a good job. He's like, I sign the checks. I, I get whoever I need, and then I let, the, I let the guys who know more than me about the sport do their things. But, yeah, the – the Washington owner, he's kind of he got a little Jerry Jones in him. He wanna he wanna be, you know, the man in the spotlight. Man, there's only one Jerry Jones, and he gets away with that because he's in Texas. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's the man down there. So uh, speaking of Jerry Jones, bro, this dude was drafting from his yacht, <laughs> from inside his yacht. It looked like he quarantined himself inside the yacht. It legit looked like a scene from a movie when you know. The bad guy trying to escape. That's what it looked like. It was just him. I think it was his wife and maybe his son or, or something that was with him. But it was just him, the big old room by himself, him sitting on the couch by himself. It was hilarious. And that's and that's the thing I was talking about. Actually, my dad was talking about Jerry Jones. You know what I mean? Just saying, like, he had a sort of certain formula in the 90s and hasn't won since. You know what I mean? 
sometimes you might need to step down and might need to allow somebody else to create a new formula for you. Because it seems with, like it's always about him. The problem with Jerry Jones, he had the same thing that Jerry Cross had. He wanted to get more credit than he deserved. Because he, he wanted to take more credit than Jimmy Johnson. But, I mean, before Jimmy Johnson got there, they were like 1-15, in 2-14. and 14. They, were, they were just losing. And then Jimmy Johnson actually came in there, and Jimmy Johnson was cutting anybody. If you suck, he'll cut you. And, you know, but Jerry wanted more credit, and that's where they clashed heads. Because you can't have the owner trying to also want credit. Like, come on, man. And we all know owners usually dollar signs. You know what I mean? The coaches are the ones that are, that are the brains that create the wins, man. Bring championships to your organization. Yeah. So, yeah, some of these owners, man, it was, it was kind of hilarious. But – you know, so there were a lot of interesting moves in the drafts. So the New York Giants, you know how they just need help everywhere, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so everybody was surprised that they took Andrew Thomas, the ta- offensive tackle from Georgia, because there were so many other tackles that were rated higher than him. There were so many other players that were probably better skilled players or skill position players that were better than him. And everybody was shocked that, the Giants took him after all those years of having issues with the offensive line and and then they take this guy so it's like yeah you want to protect the quarterback and and you want to protect Saquon you want somebody to ball for Saquon and Barkley but they could have been somebody else better than him that you, they could have gotten which is you know, maybe they see something that other people don't see other critics don't see the Giants for one New York football is just not that good at making decisions to make their team better. It seems like in the past 10 years, to be honest with you, like they've been the laughing stock of the NFL. And I would say they have a lot of money to be great, to be great organizations, but the people they have in there, I don't know if they're so bent on analytics. I don't know if that applies to football, but people that are pressing keys in these businesses, they should have people that are scoring touchdowns or know what it's like to even smell the grass on the field. Yeah, it's, it was interesting their pick because I'm just like, I mean, okay, if that, I mean, you, I, I understand the move, but and seeing some of the highlights from the dude, they say he's good, but he he has a lot of work, work to do to you know to become an all pro or whatever. So the guy, they're drafting a the guy with good potential, but it was just an interesting move for them because you know, they got a lot of issues. But you know it is sometimes too with football, like a guy might not look that Harold, or he, he might not be that Harold coming out, and then he ends up being like. All, all pro man or you know what I mean so yeah. all star you never, never really know so they might see something that we don't because yeah. we get comments on like who, who's the best guy at that position coming out yeah. and they might see like he might be better at this at doing some certain things that other guys might not be who are I'll highly say, ranked yeah I'll say this for them they they address the need to protect for in that offensive line because quarterback protection has been an issue for like the past five years and they've, they've whiffed on a lot of guys that they've drafted so Maybe this one could pan out because they do have a they do have a running back and a quarterback who who may be good at some point. You know, as long as he learns how to hold on to the football. So the Giants have potential. I say this: Miami Dolphins are not looking like are not looking so bad now with the with the new head coach and the new GM. Some of the stuff, the moves they've been making in free agency and then drafting. They had two first round picks, I believe, and they drafted Tua and then they got an offensive lineman at number 18, Austin Jackson. So, and and they picked up some defensive players during free agency. This team, I mean, <laughs> they well, look like I, they know what they're doing now. When I seen the overall, like, um, draft grading, I heard they made it out the best in the draft. Yeah. So they got the quarterback they wanted. They got the support and pieces they wanted. They're creating some type of, New culture down there, so hopefully it pans out. Cause being in Miami, it's tough if you're not Dan Marino. And that one year they were good. Yeah, yeah. They also got a defensive back too, cause they had three first round picks. This is from the trade they had earlier with Pittsburgh. So they got a defensive back from Auburn, who they said is pretty good. But and they they had already signed two more defensive backs in the, from free agency. And then they got Kyle Van Noy from the Pats. They, they picked up a couple of defensive players. So Brian Flores, he's actually putting together a good team, and he might be the first Belichick coaching tree guy that's actually going to succeed because, you know, you know what happened to the the rest of them. He actually 
they're actually giving him the pieces he needs to succeed and he actually is doing something because towards the end of the season, they did play really well, really good. So they might have something. And right now the AFC East is kind of wide open because the only team that don't have a quarterback is the Pats. Yeah, man. I mean, I hope, you know, Flores doesn't look that bad as the coach. I don't want him to look too good because, <laughs> you know, they in our division. But I hope they are at least okay because it, it, it stinks watching Miami be bad for so long. You know what I mean? Hey, I mean, so, it, it don't stink for me. They got they got all the good stuff happening down there anyway. They got good weather. But, <laughs> but also, true though, it would be good for one of um, Bellicans, I want to say, offsprings or coaching offsprings to do something because they seem like they always come back to the nest after a while. Yeah. I, yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I mean, what's this guy in Houston? What's his name? I'd be forgetting coach's name, but you know that. O'Brien, Bill O'Brien. I mean, oh, he's, yeah. he's been in Houston forever, but he hasn't been doing a good job. But he's actually probably had his, his the longest tended coach there that from that came from the Belichick tree. So I don't know, but I'm rooting for Flores just because he's black. So. <laughs> I was gonna say that too. He's a brother. He's yes. a brother. And there were, oh yeah. So this was the shocking move of the night. The Green Bay Packers, Green Bay Packers selected a quarterback at number twenty. What number were they? I forget what number the Packers were when they picked at number twenty-six. They selected a quarterback when they need skill position. Don't understand why they selected a quarterback when they just gave Aaron Rodgers a contract. <laughs> And and their biggest issues was surrounding him with with players that will stay on the field, and then you go draft the quarterback. Maybe there's something that we don't know it's going on behind the scenes because he he kind of has somewhat of of a decline. So hey. I, I don't know what's going. You know, football's weird. Like you might have a bad like two months, and they might want to get rid of you for the rest yeah. of. The- your career, so who knows, bro? I don't, I don't know. Makes no yeah, sense. I guess they're looking for the future. They're looking it's towards suspicious. the future. Yeah, because Rogers is like 35, 36 or something. So he's getting up there. But they, if they wanted to win now, they probably should have drafted a skill player just to help them out. Because we saw, we saw in the AFC in the NFC Championship game, they they put up zero points in the first half, and they just look, they just look like they didn't want to be there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this I don't know how this is gonna help, but uh congratulations, I guess. Maybe Jordan Love will I mean maybe they'll trade for him. Somebody said they should start a rumor that the Patriots trade for Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Or Belichick's gonna bring Andrew Luck back out of retirement. I'll take either one, man. Hey man, we need a quarterback. The Pats need a quarterback badly. I'm just I'm just looking at this at their roster and I'm like, yo, these quarterbacks are got uh, trash. Yo, I done seen people who I've never even knew even watch football talking, posting Brian Hoyer picks. Stuff, but who is this guy? <laughs> so, like, I feel bad for Hoyer because it's like, bro, you ain't – you're not an awful football player. You just ain't the one for New England, man. Yeah, like, yeah. we got a high – we got a high standard quarterbacks nowadays. That Bledsoe ever is over. And even right. he was – he had yeah. numbers. You know what I mean? So – yeah, man, it, it's oof. it's it's interesting time when you look at the Patriots and you see that every team in the AFC East has a quarterback and then they're the only ones that doesn't, which is which is interesting. And also, also in the draft, another quarterback, Justin Herbert, he went to San Diego because we know they were in need of a quarterback, which was I think it was a good fit for him because San Diego already has the weapons. They got the receivers, they have they have the offensive weapons, they got a good defense, so. If he could go in there and just not screw things up, I mean, he's going to make those rookie mistakes. They'll, he'll be all right. And, you know, playing in Oregon, the fans will travel. Yeah. So it's a lot easier being a rookie playing closer, you know what I mean, to your alma mater because, you know, guys will support you compared to going across country. You know what I yeah. mean? Did I say so, San Diego again? I keep calling them San Diego. <laughs> well, what you, who do you travel to? I, L.A. Chargers. I keep calling them San oh, Diego. <laughs> I, I keep, I'm glad it's in the same state, California. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I keep calling them San Diego. I, I don't know why. Also, and also the Cowboys, they had a pretty good draft, good first round. They selected C.D. R- C. Lamb, All-American wide receiver from Oklahoma. Now they got a whole bunch of wide receivers, but offense wasn't their issue last year. <laughs> their issue was defense and being able to stop guys. So 
I think they have at least four good wide receivers, but now there's only one football. <laughs> maybe you're gonna maybe you're gonna try to outscore you on some Golden State type type stuff. Yeah, that that that's their best bet because I think they lost four or five defensive players, starters from last season. So and they didn't replace him. I mean, they got Alden Smith back, but this dude's been out of the league since 2015. Oh. Um, there was another guy that they, that's been suspended from. That's on their roster that's been suspended. So they got two guys coming that's been suspended. That's missed a long time. So I don't know how that – I mean, you haven't played since 2015. That adjustment is going to be crazy just trying to get back into football shape. So, Ooh, good luck, Dallas. I don't know. Five years is a long time. Hopefully he was training every day at least, like staying in some form of shape. He was in rehab. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cause he had that uh, indefinite suspension. Huh? He had that indefinite suspension because he had a you know a little substance abuse issue. Oh, uh, okay. okay. And he had, okay. he's a numerous violator, so yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Habitual line stepper. Yeah, habitual. It, pretty sad too, but um, hey, yo, hey. you really should have watched that draft. There was a lot of interesting things happening in that draft. So when C D Lamb got it, I don't know if you saw the clip on social media. So his girl tried to take the phone. <laughs> from she tried to grab his phone, and he snatched it from her real quick. <laughs> like just snatched it. It was the funniest thing in the world. Uh, it was so hilarious. And then there was another one. It was a bad night for girlfriends because there was another one. One of the <laughs> another another offensive lineman from Georgia. He was there crying, and then the girl he, she was hugging on him. So the mom was trying to get her to go off so the camera could just be on him. She wouldn't move, so the mom grabbed her and moved her out the way. Hilarious. It was hilarious. And these girls be trying to get their little two seconds of fame. Bruh. Yeah, they know, but you better you better rock with them the whole whole ride. I don't even think they're gonna make the roster after this. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna make the final cut after this. Also, there was some there was some other interesting things happening in that draft. So we got to look at all the GMs and coaches as homes, you know, because a lot of them were in their dining rooms or living room area or whatever. So some interesting ones I picked up. So the Minnesota Vikings GM, his last name is Spielman. I have I have questions for him. So he was there, and he is not African American. He is a Caucasian man. Okay. And there were two African American young young adults that were in his home with him. You know, now they didn't look like a product of a mixed, of a mixed couple. They, 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 was, they was like my brother's complexion. My brother too was complexion. <laughs> All right. So I'm just sitting there and I'm looking and they didn't show the mom. So if they had showed the mom, maybe I would have got the answers that I needed, but I'm just trying to sit, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what is going on over there because there's two of them and then you're there, and they're in your house. What in the world is going on? I'm just, I'm sitting there like, yo, what is going on? Does he have any adopted kids? I'm assuming if if he did, those two are the adopted kids. <laughs> I would hope so, or like their neighbors or something. But, I, but, I don't know. Yeah, but if you look, if you just looked at it, you'll just be wondering, just like I was like, what, what is happening over there? What did I, what? I ain't gonna lie. I sometimes wonder when I'm in a store and I see a little black baby with two like parents of the opposite race or whatever. And he looks at me and I'm like, I hope you belong to them. <laughs> cause you, cause you know, you know them cases you hear about people who snatch your kids and stuff. So I'm like, uh, yeah. Bad one. Yeah, but in this so case, I, they look like they look like they were one was like in their was like a t in their late teens and one one was probably like in their early twenties. So they look grown. They were grown, but. It was just like this is very interesting, very, very, very interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, just, man, that's yeah. <laughs> I have questions. I have a yeah. lot. Of, I have a lot of questions, and also I forgot there was another one I wanted to touch on. <laughs> I got to go online to see about this. <laughs> and man, yeah, yeah, it, you, you gotta watch that. You'll you'll get a good laugh, a good laugh. But you gotta see CD Lamb snatching his form. I think I put it on my IG story. I mean, who knows what he was doing on that thing? 
Hey man, he was probably she was probably he probably got a um a hey stranger text or <laughs> congratulations. Oh, he definitely got a couple. Congratulations text from somebody that he <laughs> he thought he blocked. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably, probably. But all right, just just more on the draft. There was some good. A lot of some teams have some, had some good picks as I'm going through this. The the San Francisco 49ers they drafted another D lineman because they lost one to, to free agency to the charge to the Colts. The Jaguars they had a good draft. The Eagles, you know, the Eagles they had issues at wide receiver. They had issues everywhere, especially <laughs> wide receivers and people staying healthy. That whole team, that whole team didn't make it through the season. You know, the quarterback made it to the playoffs and then he and then he was gone too. So. That entire starting unit didn't make it through the entire season healthy. So they drafted a wide receiver, which was a position they needed because me and you were talking about it. At, at, at one point, we was wondering who the heck are all these receivers that they got. Yo, they drafted a new, new nutritionist too, a new trainer. <laughs> they need a whole new everything. They need a whole new vitamin sponsorship. Like, them guys' bones is brittle. Yo, brittle is not the word. The word, it was – yeah, I don't know, but they they got a receiver which they needed. So I'm looking at their receiving calls right now. This guy from J- from TCU, Jalen Rieger. They say he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He just had a terrible quarterback at, at TCU. <laughs> and then Deshaun Jackson. Hopefully he's back healthy. Alshon Jeffrey is supposed to come back. Zach Ertz is still. He was the healthiest one out of all of them. So they're saying if they if those guys could actually stay healthy and stay on the field. They could be, uh, they could be, a, they could have a good season, but if not, I'll, I'll be honest, man. The witch doctor. Yeah, from what I've been like seeing interviews and opinions and hearing people, it seems like they, they kind of fed up with Carson, man. He seems like he got one more year to do something. I'm, my I mean, eyes. If they fed up with him, they should not give him that long term deal. Cause they, I'm talking they about see, the fans. I ain't talking about the organization. Oh, the organization. Uh, you know, Philly fans. <laughs> you know, you know them. They, they, they're they're a special breed. I just don't want Carson Wentz to be that guy. Like in thirty years from now, his ten year or his five year span be like the what it could it should have would have been of Carson Wentz. You know what I mean? Because all injuries is always in front of the team. Yeah, in a way, like they need like the witch doctor or something. They need a they need to sacrifice a player or something because it's like. <laughs> They just need to sacrifice somebody, a practice squad guy or something, because the injuries for them are kind of ridiculous. Cause yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and they always come at the most random, un- inopportune times, though. That's, kind of, that's common, man, for Boo and Santa. They would never boo Santa, man. Yeah, that, that, that. Good. That's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point. I don't even believe in that man, I don't even boo <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> And also, let's talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they had quite the offseason. I mean, you know, they got they got Tom Brady in free agency. Tuesday, they signed Gronk. Now they've signed an offensive lineman to protect him, a tackle to protect him. They've put a good – they've got a good – looking on paper, they have a good team offensively. Defensively, everybody's been telling me they're, they weren't that bad. It's just – their quarterback was throwing interceptions that, <laughs> oh, man. that had them. Back that boy up. <laughs> I was saying Jameis was throwing interceptions that would give that would have them playing terrible field position most the majority of the time. So if you look at them, they have every position. They got a they got a wide they got two good wide receivers. They got they got some young tight ends. I don't know if if they're gonna keep all of them. Because I know Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard is still on the roster. I don't know if they're going to keep all of them. And then I don't even know who their running back is. But, I mean, whoever it is, they can just plug someone in there. They have a good team. Now the only now the matter is how much does Brady have left in the tank? Does he have one more good season left? Because when you're in the 40s, you have one good one left. You, have, you can have put one good one left. And then after that, it's, it's, uh, it's wishful thinking. Well, for one, with these, this whole Buccaneers thing, I swear it's, this, I'm, it's conspiracy, man. They set Jameis up for Brady to come in there. <laughs> Brady, Brady's bones is looking old and cold. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And, you know, he's only going back home to Cali or Florida to retire with the rest of them. So, like, I swear they set Jameis up, dog. Like, I swear. 
I swear they did. But um, <laughs> but, but Davis but, didn't help himself either. Nah, nah, he didn't either. He didn't help himself either. You know, he didn't. He didn't. But you know, he'll get another job somewhere. Now Brady, you know, I, I respect Brady. You know, Brady began his career as a, a system quarterback, and I kind of feel like that's how he ended his career, or with the Pats personally. You know what I mean? So well, let's see. Well, let's see if he could get a get a quick grasp on this playbook with the Buccaneers, because it usually takes a guy one or two years to really understand the playbook before they can really be effective. So yeah, hopefully also, that comes in. Yeah, it also sucks that they can't even yeah. – usually they be having their little off-season workouts now, the mini the mini camps, just so everybody get acquainted with each other. So, you know, COVID-19 kind of put you know, that aside. Now, all that is Mother Nature telling Tom he should have stayed in New England. <laughs> you know, that's what happened. Nah. <laughs> But um, and it's too like people making a big hoopla about Gronk come coming back to the Buccaneers. I'm like, first of all, how how is Gronk gonna throw all that weight back on? He lost a lot of weight. You said he might be a receiver now. He they might turn him into great. Cause I don't see the Gronk anymore. Yeah, yeah. Unless he's one of those guys that can naturally put back weight quickly. You know, some people just for some reason they can put weight back on quickly. Without some assistance. Yeah. <laughs> My thing is though, Gronk was a product. Gronk was a product of all that hard work him and his brothers were doing since they were younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? To lose all that in like a a year. Yeah. Hey, My dad what... lost mad weight. He's still a his stature is still a big guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's so, uh, like, that's what happens when you're on that CBD. Uh-huh. I guess he took a year off to do that CBD. I guess that helps heal the body. Yeah. And then, it, then it made me feel like they had a little plan after he retired. Like, yo, Tom, you're going to play this last year. You go down to Florida. I'm coming with you. Hey, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. We see this happens a lot. So the Buccaneers, they got a lot of hype coming into the season. It's probably the most hype they've had since, since sapping them boys were there. So. Yeah. So that's how I watched them with sapping them with it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll see how they do. What also helps is that the NFC only got, I think, three strong teams right now that I could that I could see: the Seahawks, 49ers, Saints. I would say the Vikings, but they just—I mean—they just let Stephon Diggs go. They traded him, so and, and they they re-signed Kirk Cousins. <laughs> they give him a new deal, so I, I like you know I like Kurt, but you need some weapons around Kurt, man. Like, well, lucky for them, they drafted the receiver out of LSU, Justin Jefferson, to replace Stephon oh, Diggs. But that's okay, okay, okay. You said LSU receiver, them guys, are, there, was, there was some boys right there. Yeah, them dudes were the dudes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, well, that's about all of it for the NFL draft. I mean, the round two is to round two, three, four, five, six, seven is. This today, tomorrow, and Sunday, so everybody tune in, but nobody watches after round one. I, I'm definitely not watching because round one was long enough. That thing, that thing took a long enough. And also, it was kind of weird because I think Roger Goodell got drunk at some point because he changed his outfit. He changed his attire because he was in his house, and then what they had, they had like a, he had like a Zoom with. So whenever a team, a team was turned to draft, he had the fans on the Zoom and kind of like having them cheer or whatever. It was, it was kind of interesting, but it was weird. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think, I think Goodell was drinking at some point during the breaks. Time out, time out, they were – the fans were on Zoom. Like, people were at home. Yeah. Like, fanatic fans, and they would t- tune in the Zoom and go, ah! Yeah, so, like, uh, at Roger Goodell's house, he had the screen, and then they'll have all, like, a roll of all the fans of each team whenever it was their time to draft. I don't think I like anything that much. <laughs> the two men in shampoo. <laughs> Nothing in the world. Like, yeah, they were trying to make it, a, trying to give the fans a new experience. They did a good job, but it was hilarious. Like, you get paid for that? <laughs> nope. Because so, you, so you're cool. Like, yeah, so your whole thing is like, ooh, I was on Facetime with Roger Goodell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to Athlete's Corner. So this one, I talked to my cousin Jordy out there in old My guy. Ohio. We just talked about the season <laughs> and you know what he's up to right now since he can't he can't he's he's quarantined over there. Uh Athlete's Corner, and we're gonna come back. We'll talk about the Jordan Doc and then wrap the show up. All 
All right, welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. This one's a special one. I got family on here. Got the little little bro, big bro. Still, <laughs> he out here. I got Mr. Jordy Chimanga. What's going on, fam? What's up, big cuzzo? You know, out here in this cold. Ain't leaving the house, man. Can't it's leave. It's tough. Where you at right now? You in Dallas or? Uh, I'm, I'm back on campus in Dayton. Oh, you in Dayton? Yeah. They, they gave y'all a crib? Or they just opened up nah, the house for y'all? So I, I, I flew back and then uh, I came and I had to quarantine for two weeks. So I'm on I'm on day day 11. Jeez Louise. Well, you got what, three more days? Yeah, three more three more days. Let's let's call it two. Let's call it two. <laughs> how, how's campus? How how empty is the campus? Empty. Yeah. Like like an empty soul, really. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I haven't i I've been looking at my window every single day. I haven't seen nobody. You the only one there? It, it seems like it. I hope not. <laughs> uh, man, it's tough. It's a it, it's wild too because you guys you guys just had one of the best seasons in school history. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all didn't even get a chance to y'all didn't even get a chance to play for the for that NCAA oh, title. Oh, and, why did it always happen? And this year and this year in college basketball, it was wide open. Nobody knew who was gonna win it. Exactly. <laughs> Tell me about that when you guys when the news broke out that you that there would be no tournament. So initially we uh you know uh the news about like about COVID nineteen started to uh, like escalate, you know, not around like March, March tenth, stuff like that. So we st- we still flew and uh, went to went to Brooklyn, and we got there that night. You know, there was some news coming out, like some uh, some ter- uh, some uh, conference that had canceled the tournaments for that uh, for that conference already. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, I hope we're not next. So next morning we wake up. First news is okay. Well, we won't be allowed to to have any fans come to the games. You know, that was kind of, that was like, damn, we want to have people come and watch us, you know, but yeah. like, okay, whatever. Like, we still want to play. And then literally an hour later, another meeting come back downstairs. I said, oh, well, so they just canceled the whole tournament. So we're like, whoa. Everybody's sitting like in shine, like, what's going on? Like, they canceled everything? So, like, yeah, we're about to go back. Like, we we're about to leave in two hours, like, Pack your stuff. I'm about to go back to uh, day. And like it was just, it was just so devastating for everybody. Uh, and t- tell me, what what did the coaches tell you? What did I mean? You know, after you guys get back to Dayton and everything, what was what was the message? Yeah, kind of like you know, like a, a little a team family meeting and, and everything. Just kind of discussing, like telling us how 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 proud he was of us and like all the hard work that we put in. You know, we did everything what he asked us to do uh, this season, and he he could be more proud of anybody. You know, he was just really, really happy for all of us and all the accomplishments that we've done throughout the season. And it was really sad. We were, like, really emotional all, all around in the room. I, I, I felt really bad for uh, the seniors, the seniors, you know, and uh, uh, Obi going to the league. It's, it was really, like, like, sad to just see all this all this hard work, all this fruition come to just an end like that. It was, it was sad. Yeah, different. It was also different because you, you guys had a lot of transfers, too. You guys had a transfers that sat out last year, including yourself, yeah. and this was their first year back on the court after a year off, and then it ends like that. And who, it's kind of like crazy, excited. right? Because I remember my retro year, I was, I was there with, uh, with uh, A.B. Watson and, uh, and uh, Chase Johnson and uh, uh, Rodney Chapman. And it was, I was just like talking about like, I want to make the tournament next year, like it's going to be crazy. And like, we never expected to have like a year like that, you know? And like to see it all come to like, to to life, it was like, whoa, this is wonderful. Like, we're top three in the country. Like, this is crazy. So, like, we have a chance to actually win this. Like, let's keep working. Like, we won't get there. And, like, that next thing you know, is just everything shattered like that. So, it was, it was really, like, a, it was a hard time, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to, uh, let's get into the season. Because you guys, I think, well, you guys had some crazy winning streak. Because what was you lost? The second game of the season or something? And then you guys went on a streak or something? Yeah, like we're, uh, we lost. Well, we only had two losses to uh, Kansas, you know, in Maui, then uh, to Colorado in the Chicago Classic, and that was it. After that, we just peaked and, and went on. We had the longest uh, win streak in, uh, in in college. Yeah. Well, what, what what was it about the team that made you guys just kind of that made you guys click so well together with a lot of the new faces coming in, with the transfers coming in? And I think it was really 
it was really, I think, based on two things, which was uh, one was coaching and uh, two was like uh, adaptability, you know, like some, some guys were with to, uh, to, to make sacrifices like myself and I, you know, with a sacrifice with a team and like to just trying to find like whatever works best and just take that route and, and fly with it, you know, and then coach had a really good, like, uh, had a really good game plan for us and then we folded to the team, you know, and it worked. Yeah, because you guys ran through the A-10 conference. You, you said the A-10 is always considered a, a good conference to play. And this was the first year you it, that I could think of Dayton being at the top. Because usually when I think of A-10, I'm always thinking of St. Joseph's, you know. You might yeah, be, the NVC, VCU, probably the, uh, the team that's been there a couple times, yeah. yeah. So you, it, it was, seems it was, like you guys came out of nowhere. Yeah, this, it, that's, that's really what it was. You know, we were, we were not even picked to be – to be top, I think top, top, top four or something like that. And they you know people that really overlook this and then just to, to see us kind of explode like that, people were like, wow, this is really so shocking. What what would you say was kind of when you transitioned from Nebraska to Dayton? What, what was, was the transition easy for you or did it take you a little bit to get used to it? You know, I, you know, I adapt easily. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty easy for me to, to adapt to this uh, new culture, you know, every every good culture is, is always easy to adapt to. So it was easy for me to adapt to this one, and uh, you know, it took me uh, uh, quite some time to to kind of get used to the to the to the plays and whatnot. But I eventually uh, got got a got a, got a niche got a niche of it, and uh, I think pretty uh, worked out pretty well. I would say. So well, what's it? I, you know, when you sit back and you look at it, what, what do you think of? When you're thinking about the fuck next season, what is what is your mindset when you go and when? I mean, I don't know if you can get on the court here, but what is your mindset when you get back? And Probably yeah, it's just out? just worried to think about like all this, whatever this COVID nineteen going to end. Like it's, it's going to end at some at some point, you know. So we already got this right here. So I'm right now. I'm just I'm just having my mindset on just like getting back with my teammates and kind of figure out like like who do we have, who's still here, and whatnot, and then go from there. I think we have a pretty good chance of. Of, of doing a really uh, having, uh, having a really good year again next year. I know because I know you said Obi, he's getting ready for the draft, and uh, yeah. most likely everyone's coming returning. You guys gonna have a good core coming back for next season. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should have some some solid players. You know, uh, Obi uh, into the draft. Jalen also into the draft, and then uh, we have uh, two seniors that graduated. You know, uh, Ryan Mikesell and uh, Trey Landon that graduated. Mm-hmm. So we should. We still, have, we still have a number of people, and uh, one of my good friends, uh, Jerry Mato, is transferred to uh, to another college. So that's five, that's, that's five guys, and it should be good. Oh, should be good, for sure. good yeah, I, you guys had a good rotation of players that came in, though. though. Yeah, we have we have a deep rotation of players, and we have some uh, some registers too that that, that that didn't play this year. So seeing them play next year, like what did they didn't practice? Yeah, yeah, I think I think we'll be gonna be good. Now, now for you, what have you been doing to just stay in shape, man? I know it's hard to get on the court or in the weight room nowadays. What, what you've been doing to just stay in shape? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you broke a little bit. I, I can't hear you for a little while. What'd you uh, say? Uh, what, what are you doing to stay in shape? What, is, what have you been doing? Because it's hard to get on the court or the gym. So we... I've just been lifting in my, in my, in my room over there. I got, some, I got some few weights over there. My strength coach gave me a little a little program to to do, so I've just been doing that. And I got this little this nice little, yeah. and I just I just get on that. And I got a little basketball. I do some handles in the you know in the hallway right here, and just trying to stay active, you know. Yeah, yeah but yeah. but I haven't been able to get any shots up. Now I've been able to uh, to get in the gym yet, because you know I gotta wait for uh, to this to the score uh, quarantine like it's over, because I, I don't want to take any chances to infect anybody. Okay, but they are letting some kids go get shots up in the gym. I think uh, I, don't, I don't know if anybody's here. I don't know if if, if any other players are here. I think oh. every, every other players are home. I think I'm, I'm the only player that's that's here right now. So. Oh, so you got that all by, all by yourself? So, oh, yeah. So. As soon as I'm ready, I'm yeah, I'm going there. Yeah, so, so you good there? Are you were supposed to graduate next month. They were you were supposed to walk across the stage next month. Hey, you you were supposed to be here next month, man. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, that's I know. why. They, 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 they're gonna hold it off till till the till the winter. I mean, till the fall semester for you. I don't know what. The, I, don't know, I don't know what the president gonna do. Honestly, like I, I wonder what he's gonna do. He, he said he was gonna do something though, like for sure. But I, we don't know what yet. So, 
at best case scenario, he might as well have y'all walk during the December ceremony. Cause yeah, at least bring everybody back. I hope they gonna buy everybody a plane ticket. <laughs> they got money. They they got they got an endowment. <laughs> you know you know you know they got money over there. Oh man. But but what what else is new with you? What else what else you got going on besides just studying and getting ready for finals? Nothing new, really. You know, uh, studying and stuff, and I've been really. Taking time, you know, I, I I write poetry stuff like that. So I've been taking time to to kind of like master that 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 art of myself, you know. So I've been writing a lot of poetry here and there, and uh, posting some on Snapchat and whatnot, you, Instagram. You need, to, you need to send me one, write one, and and read it out loud and send it to me so I can post it on my IG story. You know, All right, I'll do that you for know, you. Gotcha. You, know you know, it's April's Poetry Month, so I gotta post at least one. Ooh, I got you. I'm gonna send you some. I got you. I got a good one too. All right, Cuzzo, appreciate you taking the time, man. Really appreciate it, you know. I'll see, I'll see you soon, you know. You know, we'll, we'll catch you soon. We're going to link up soon for sure. We got to. Yeah, definitely. You guys been watching Athletes Corner. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Just like that. All right, and we are back. So let's talk about the last dance. The traveling cocaine circus. What? <laughs> that that was <laughs> that was that was some good stuff right there. That I don't know. I, that was those first two episodes were hilarious and quite entertaining for me. I I enjoyed every every bit of it. It was it was pretty good just to see all the behind the scenes and man, them dudes were rude to Jerry Cross. Yo, to be honest. That's how it kind of was for me and my college coach. We were cool, though, but, like, he was a little guy trying to tell us what to do. And it's like, bro, you can't do none of it. Like, what are you talking about? So, like, I totally understand that, and especially at that level. Like, you, you guys are all million-dollar athletes. Like, who is this guy who can't even play in the peewee league trying to tell you what to do? Yo, the part that had me in tears was when he said, Jerry, you going to come out and do layups with us? <laughs> John said, and then what else he said? He said, did you take – did you take pills to make you that short or that fat? Like, yo. <laughs> yo, Mook, I already told you some of this when I stayed to my coach in the, in the weight room while he be watching us lift weights. So, and he was like 5'7", 140. So, like, come on, bro. I, I, yeah, that, that was very, very, yeah, that was hilarious. But that whole, man, Jerry Krause and Jerry Reindorf was doing their best to try to mess it all up. That's the that's the history of the world we live in. When they see the successful black men doing some stuff, and it's like, you know, well, let's just sabotage just because we want to sabotage. Like, there's no real reason to even sabotage. Like, they, they had <laughs> none. Make- they had none. I mean, <laughs> like saying Phil Jackson, even if he wins 82 game, two games, he won't be coming back the following season. I mean, it's just like, yo, they just want. They just did a second three peat in the same decade. Why I'm would you not? Too Remember, Jordan was unlike any athlete they've ever saw before. Dr. J, Dr. J, Iceman's the Iceman, but Jordan was he transcended everything. Yeah. Yeah, oh, he was. Can you, you see me? Yeah, yeah. I got a phone call for spam. Yeah. But yeah, he transcended everything. So like the sneakers, the they've never even seen that before. Yeah, all that marketing that Jordan did, it was it was ridiculous. And then you could kind of tell. You could kind of tell Jordan was a big deal when you see guys that were in when he came into the league, and you see guys that's been in the league a couple more years, and they're looking at him like, "Whoa, who is this guy? And what the hell?" Because he had his first game, I think it was preseason game, yeah, preseason game. Sidney Moncrief, he was like defensive player of the year, and he he was just like, "I I I had no answer for him," and nobody saw that. No, nobody, 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 nobody saw that coming. Like they knew he was going to be good, but they didn't know that he was going to be that good right away too, right away. Jordan came at the right time where the game turned and he was the corner. You know what I mean? Like he was doing stuff that nobody else was doing. So it was like, they couldn't even keep up because they never played that way growing up. You know what I mean? Like they're already programmed a certain way. Just like if like we play guys from the sixties, they're, they're gonna kill them because they don't got certain moves that we got. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Jordan was that corner. Like, yeah. and it took some guys, it took some time for people to catch up to him, somewhat. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And it was just cool that they actually went all the way back to when he was 
to college. They did a little bit of a, his high school, talked about his high, him in high school. I think I just like how they did that. They went back and then they kept going back and forth with back then and then to the present and in, in, during that 98 season. There was a lot of things happening with him in the 80s when he first <laughs> – being a young player, your first year in the league, and you go to a hotel, and then you see cocaine and and women, and it's your teammates. You're just like, oh, this is so this is yeah. going on here. And too, when you're that young, you're thinking like, I just gotta go work out, practice, and play. And you're like, who? It's kind of like when you see guys doing stuff that's detrimental to their body, yeah. you kind of don't rock with them like that. And that's why I kind of see why Jordan was kind of like, man, I'm a killer. I'm me. I know I'm putting in the work. You guys are doing nothing. Yeah. Like, that's why y'all didn't score 40, 50, not caring about his teammates because they didn't care about themselves. Yeah. And one thing I liked about Jordan, though, I like, granted, they always say Jordan's an a-hole, but in order to be good at a certain level, you have to be that way. You can't be nice to every single teammate all the time. You got to push people. You might get into a fight. It might have you. I told people, I had kids quitting on my AAU teams. We play and we smack them. So it's one of the things, like, you got to hold yourself and the people you're around to a high standard. Legit was just talking about that the other day. Just like any leader in any, it rather be professional sports, whether it be in business, they got somewhat of an asshole in them. They they just have to be an asshole to make their point, to get their point across sometimes. And it's like, it's nothing personal, but yo, we're here to win. Let's get it together. Because in all, in all reality, in sports, there's two options. Be like or be a winner. It's hard to, it's hard to be both. Yeah. It's hard to even Steph Curry, they loved him until he started really winning. Then they started calling him Harry. And this is yeah. the third. And this is that. So it's like, bro, either you want to be a winner or you want to be like, I'd rather be a winner. I don't care if you like me. My, my parents like me. My boys like me. I'm good enough. My right. kid like me. I'm good. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> like, being like this isn't going to get you them rings. We, exactly. We've seen, we, we've seen it now with some players. <laughs> they want to be liked so badly. And, you know, they can't get over that hump. Think about the Jordan era. There were a lot of guys that were like, a lot of guys were commercial. Barkley, anything else, be uncivilized. How many rings you got? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's so many guys that had all this stardom. Larry Johnson, Grandma Ma. Yeah. How many rings you got? Like, right. Yeah, you know what I mean? A, so, yeah, so, I, I, hey, the, the whole the whole matter of Jordan being a jerk, hey, I, I ain't mad at it. I mean, I've played – I played organized sports with people that were jerks, <laughs> and I was just like, so you just got to sit there and take it. You don't want them to be a jerk to you? Go out there and perform. Do what and you're supposed so to you, do. And if you don't want them to be a jerk to you, don't do stuff that's going to be detrimental to your body during the season and letting them see you doing it. It's yeah. kind of like you lose respect for some of your teammates when you know they're doing stuff that you know they're not going to help you with. Yeah. Especially when you get paid, paid that much money to do it. Yeah, and also Scotty Pippen, too, he was a big – he became like a sympathetic figure in this in in episode two, and then I was just thinking about it. And I'm just like, you know, what? Scotty kind of did it to himself. <laughs> he, he he did it to himself signing that contract after he was told or advised by the owner to not sign it. Then Scotty had an ankle injury. It was his ankle, right? Yeah, and he postponed it as long yeah. as he could. He he waited. He waited until the season started when he could have just had gotten it done in the off season and. He would have came back. So, Scotty, he did a little part, and he played a little role in trying to mess up them through doing another three-peat because it's like, yo, what are you doing, man? Yeah, yo, you're mad at the, ownership, but come on, man. You sometimes – you think sometimes he was, like, a product of the league in the aspect of, like, he wasn't highly heralded. He wasn't even recruited. He got to college, grew, uh, uh, and kind of worked out in his favor, and all of a sudden, the kind of, like, when he got to professional level, the ego kind of kicked in. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have it growing up. Right? Yeah, the, yeah, and also because of those two years that Jordan was gone, he was basically the man on the Bulls. He led them in every category. He was like, I think he finished top three in MVP votings one of those seasons. Yep. And then, yep. And then he felt like he never got whatever whatever credit he deserved. But you know, my thing with Scotty, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you sideways when you refuse to go back into a game because the play wasn't called for you. You know, that's, you know, that's been on my mind the whole time you mentioned Scotty because it's like, <laughs> end of the day, even Jordan, some of his, some of his championships were made by other players. Right. Her, accident. Like, that's part of the game. <laughs> yeah, so for you not to go back into a game for that, that's kind of, that was my thing with Scotty Pippen. And then it was also the migraine thing that happened, the Detroit series that happened. So Scotty had some moments in the playoffs that made you be like, is he mentally tough? 
Yo, question. Do you know what a migraine actually is? Because I've never had one. I've never had one either. All right, cool. Well, yeah. okay. I know, I know, I know folks know. that have it, and it's like they yeah. get severe headaches, and it's like they get dizzy and all that. But wear some, da- wear some glasses, damn it. My thing is, is it so severe that you're not going to play a game where you're getting paid a lot of money? money? I mean, you was, I and my thing is, you was fine most of the, you know, you was fine the other games and stuff, and plus, this was a crucial game, so, I mean, hey, but yeah, but yeah, Scotty signing that seven-year deal, it was, a. Uh, you know, some people say it was, this is what growing up in poverty will do to you, and I think, <laughs> yeah. I think, and he and also he was thinking like he want to take care of his family, and he he saw eighteen million and thought, oh, that's that's big money. But then when you break it down, and then he's like seven years, that's ridiculous. And then the fall, a couple of years afterwards, Alonzo Mourning got like a hundred million dollar contract because of the new of the new deal, the new TV deal. So if Pippen took a sort of deal, he probably would have got probably would have got crazy paid. And that's why they're doing way more educating to these rookies and stuff because of guys in the past getting screwed over by their agents mm-hmm. and by the league yeah. just because they're, they're them not knowing their worth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and this documentary is also, you know, this is always going to happen, the LeBron-Jordan comparison. We got this, <laughs> we got the generation of LeBron and then we got other people that watch the game and just wondering what are y'all talking about. I saw Mikel Bridges. This dude, he posted that LeBron would have had 90 on that 86 Celtics team. And I'm just like, I like, I like. Do you, does do does anybody realize how good that team was? <laughs> For even Jordan Yo, to score 63 oh, on them, but does anybody? I think not a lot of people realize how good that team was. First of all, if you're saying somebody's gonna score 90, that means they gotta make like 40 some shots. He has LeBron has to make a good amount of jump shots. We watched LeBron lose. NBA Finals because he didn't want to shoot the ball. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? And, and, then, and then also people are saying that Jordan gets more praises for losing than, and LeBron gets more criticized. And I'm just like, yo, Jordan wasn't getting praised for <laughs> – he wasn't getting praised until after he got that ring in 1990 because the story on him was you can't win like that. He's a ball hog. He's not a good teammate. It's just – you're never going to win with him. That was the story until he got yo, over the hump and beat in Detroit because Detroit yo, was the behind. The problem is we got history and people have bad memories. Dude, 40 years from now, they're going to say Joe look like Scott Van Pelt. <laughs> Unless there's video of it. Bro, like, these people are cooked, man. Like, they got a lot of people saying stuff that didn't even watch basketball. Like, I was talking to somebody who I didn't even know you knew what Jordan, who Jordan was telling me about Pippen and all this. I'm like, what do you know about whatever? You know what I mean? Like, it's just too many opinions, man. Like, yeah. like. And granted, I wasn't and, alive. I wasn't alive when he scored that 63 points, but I was alive when LeBron scored 51 points in the NBA Finals and they lost. And people was just, the whole week, people were talking about how great he was. The only two people that were hating on it was, you know, the, the, the usual suspects, the same two people that hate on LeBron. And, and they was basically saying he should have never passed it to George Hill for that wide open layup. And I'm just like, well, I mean, he should have shot it. I mean, <laughs> yo, it's wide I, open, but. but yo, but if, but if Kerr and Paxton and other people don't make them shots, you're going to say Jordan should have passed it to them either. Mm-hmm. So get, get, get better supporting cast members. <laughs> get, <laughs> Or guys that are just more more professional and more confident. Because, like, they're out. That's another thing they say. Jordan never asked for more players. Never demanded to get traded. He just dealt with it. He dealt. Because I'll be honest, growing up, that's all I knew. Like, you get traded. I mean, you get drafted to a team. That's who you play for until they want to get ready. Right? Yeah. And I think in the book, and there's a book called The Jordan Rules, I think there was a point he actually was like, anytime he would re- try to get the ownership or the GM to get somebody, they, they wouldn't even bother listening. They'd get somebody else. So, you know. He didn't have that much input into who who he gets to play with because today the players, if you're the man on the team, you're gonna get some of, some type of input of who you play, who who you could get on the team because we see it all the time with the trades and all that. So, I mean, yeah, but it was way different. Like back then, it was just like, all right, this is what we got, this is what we're working with. All right, cool. But now it's like, I want this guy. 
demand a trade. So tell them you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna sit out unless you play, unless you get traded to this. So. And like playing with guys you don't know, that's what makes that experience part of the experience, the journey, the camaraderie. Yeah. You get to get to know each other. You don't pick people you like just because you like them. You know they're good. That yeah. defeats the whole purpose of the team, personally to me. Because yeah. it's like that. You know, in college, I, I play with guys who I – even overseas, I play with guys who I've never met before. And it's yeah. cool getting to know them, where they're from, type of stuff they like. You know what I mean? Like, it's just cool to do. Yeah. So, yeah, that whole documentary, those first two episodes, there were – it was a lot going on. There was a lot of interesting stuff that I found hilarious. I still think Mike was drunk. Mike, Mike's drunk during this interview at some point because I don't know how long. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't glad. know how long he sat with that person, and I don't know how many glasses of his liquor that he drank. But yo, you didn't know they did an article on that. They did like a little article on his fluctuating glass. Oh, for- <laughs> yeah, yo, bro, people get paid to do articles on every single thing. They probably do articles on Mike Blake, like crazy. That's funny, but. But yeah, that Jordan Dog episodes, episodes three and four is this Sunday. Rodman is episode three. The focus is oh, gonna yeah. be on Rodman. Now that is gonna be quite entertaining because yo, you ever seen this book? You ever read his book? Rodman's? Yeah. Nah. My uncle had. I'll see if he still got it. I, I can imagine what stuff he said in that book. <laughs> Dennis Rodman was like, <laughs> "Thank God social media wasn't around with Dennis." <laughs> He would have been social media, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> is wild, but all right, that's it. We got through everything. That's it. Yeah, oh. that's it. I mean, we got to oh, go to the store now. Give a shout out to some of the kids who are committed to college. I know one of your players, Jessica Ruiz, she's committed to Plymouth yep. State. Congratulations yep. to her. Uh, Michelle Johnson, she's committed. Con- congratulations to her. Um, the whole English there, I mean, Jarnell, Jarnell, Mason, JB, they, they've all committed. They've all made their commitments. Um, other dude, a couple good, a couple guys from the bench too. They, they got, they got, they committed too to schools. I yep. think. Je- yep. Jefferson and uh, I forget the other dude's name. Was it Gabe? Uh, I think. I think. Hey, Gabriel? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He committed to some school in New York. So, um, yeah, kudos to them. We're, we're, I got a lot of I got interviews with a few of those guys. Some of them are already up. If you go to the LCTV website, you can check them out. I got some lined up coming up. I got some that'll be aired soon, so you'll check those out. Make sure you check us out, LCTV after the whistle, Instagram. Make sure you go to the LCTV website, LCTV Facebook page, and also this guy over here. He's about to go commit a bank robbery or something. Now I just had to show y'all because I know y'all gonna be like, "What's on this dude's head?" The whole episode. And ain't no Asian mama. Yeah, all right, so <laughs> that's Todd. I'm Kala. Uh, I don't know when we'll do another episode, but maybe we'll do one. We'll do one when something big happens again. And, you know, it's kind of a down. We ain't got nothing going on. Yeah, we got nothing happening, but you know, maybe if we do an episode next week, it'll be a, it'll just be us talking trash. So make all sure right. you stay in tune and have a great day, everybody. <laughs>